the desert's full of monsters! Now, you might be saying to yourself, Chris, monsters aren't real. And while technically you would be correct, monsters aren't a real thing, but Gila monsters are, they are real and they are cool, and I cannot wait to learn more. So, while I am not an expert in Gila monsters, I have a friend who does know a thing or two, and that is Ranger Jordan Camp. So, Ranger Jordan, what can you tell us about these little guys? Uh, Gila monsters are awesome. There's a lot I could tell you about. Um, topically, they are one of the first social distancers. Uh, a lot of people ask me about them, you know, where can I find them? Why don't I see them? They're very elusive. Uh, they spend about 95% of their life underground. As far as we understand, they really only come up to the surface to eat, uh, maybe check some stuff out, but then they go back underground. And considering that they only eat an average of about 10 times a year. That's it? That's about it. Yep, and sometimes they can go an entire year without eating. Uh, you may have noticed they've got a chunky little tail on the back. That doesn't drop off like most lizards. It's kind of like carrying around a kitchen pantry with you, uh, which is great. They can just pull the reserves from that in times of stress or the winter. Um, and so they, they're very robust in that way. So if I do see a, a Gila monster in the wild, how do I know that it's a Gila monster? How do I identify these guys? It's a great question. First of all, they have really bright orange and black colorations, which is perfect for Halloween time. Uh, and they're about, uh, you know, yay big when they're adults. So oh, wow. So they're quite massive. They're a pretty big lizard. Uh, you'll also notice they have almost looks like beads everywhere, little bumps. That's why they're called a beaded lizard. And what those are, are they're called osteoderms, which you might be familiar with, with crocodiles and alligators and other things that have bones in their skin, So the bones in their skin. Yep, it's part wow. of the skin. Um, whereas the differences on a Gila monster from them is that those osteoderms are actually fused to the skull. So if the skin is removed or if they're dead, you'll actually still see those bumps all over the skull. Now, are those to, to protect the Gila monsters from, from predators? Indeed. Wow. Yep. Uh, plus, they look really cool. They do look cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then another interesting part about identification is that each one can be ID'd specifically, kind of like a thumbprint. If you ever take a picture, especially from the top, the beads and the little black and orange dots are different for every single one of them. Wow. Yeah. So we heard a little bit about these Gila monsters potentially being venomous. Is that true? They are the only venomous lizard in the United States. Wow. Uh, are they dangerous to, to people? The description of the pain is as if you had lava flowing through your veins. Yikes. So it's not the best thing to, to do. Um, I definitely wouldn't get too close to them. Um, it'll put you in the hospital and it's not going to feel great. Um, however, unlike a snake or something that injects its venom with fangs, uh, the venom is actually just part of the saliva in the lower jaw. And they have a crazy bite. And they'll just grab on, they got a bunch of little teeth, and they'll just kind of go back and forth and chew, and you just, you can't get them off. Um, you know, there's some tools to use it, but generally the only way to get them off is by submerging your hand under, or whatever part they got bit, underwater completely until wow. they let go. Um, so that's where the trouble comes in. So if you do see Gila Monster, take a picture, but definitely keep your, keep your distance. Yep, social distance even when the pandemic is over. <laughs> social distance from Gila Monsters, I yep. can do that. Due to habitat loss, Gila monsters have become a threatened species. We humans keep building on the land they call home. To study how the Gila monster population is changing, Saguaro National Park, in partnership with the University of Arizona, started a citizen science project that lets anyone help collect data on these little lizards. Yeah, you can be a scientist. If you see a Gila monster, take its picture on your phone and email it to the park. Just remember, don't get close and certainly don't touch these animals. They don't move very fast, but they are venomous, and that venom packs a punch that can certainly land you in the hospital. Your pictures give scientists important information on Gila monster populations. Since the patterns on their tail are unique to each individual Gila monster, just like your fingerprints are unique to you, researchers can learn a lot about how Gila monsters live, where they move, and other important information about the population. It's super easy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some more monsters to document. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.